people visit the Seattle Public Library system online or in person more than 17 million times a year. For patrons, it's a lifeline to free books, classes, computer access, and much more. Libraries remain one of the very few places that are open without barriers. But about a third of the library's budget would be supported by the renewal of a property tax levy. Homeowners are being asked to nearly double what they've been paying for the last seven years. We're really concerned about the affordability of Seattle. The new levy would add library hours, more services, and even a break on your overdue books. But will voter support the $219 million measure? We're looking at equity now. Our studio panel weighs in. This makes housing ever more unaffordable. We check out the Seattle Library Levy. <laughs> Next on City Inside Out. Welcome to this edition of City Inside Out. I'm your host, Brian Callanan. There's something new on your must-read list this summer, a $219 million plan to renew the Seattle Library levy. If approved, the measure would just about double the previous seven-year measure and cost around $3 more per month for a median homeowner. City leaders say the library system is changing and more money is needed for everything from homework support classes to homeless assistance. But critics say, those programs should be paid for through the city's general fund, not a voter-approved levy, which adds a new chapter in the story of Seattle's rising cost of living. Here's a riddle. What's part bilingual learning center? Yeah, so we have a nurse. Part homeless health referral service. Why do you want to become a U.S. citizen? And part citizenship training facility. Apply for a green card. If you answered the Seattle Public Library System, you've got an idea of how the job of regional manager, Francesca Wainwright, is changing. You come into the library, we're here to help you with what you need and wherever you are today. Wainwright oversees four branches from the U District up to Lake City. She says the library system's prime function is still checking out items, 12 million of them to more than 17 million in-person and online visitors last year. What's this word right here? Ramp. But ramp? she says Seattle is growing and changing, and that means the Central Library and its 26 branches need to grow and change their programs with it. I just feel it's really critical for the health of all of our communities in Seattle to have a really strong, well-resourced, easily accessible public library system. It's really kind of a, a baseline for lifting everybody up in our community. There are a lot of things the public doesn't see that libraries do. That's part of the Seattle City Council's case for expanding the seven-year library levy from $123 million in 2012 to a proposed $219 million this year. I love the idea of connecting people with um, programs and books. If approved, the levy would add hours for every library branch, pay for security officers, add more services for the homeless, and maintain or upgrade facilities, technology, and the library's physical and digital collections. The city says the new levy would maintain the funding restored by the 2012 levy in the wake of the Great Recession. And $46 million of the higher cost is due to inflation adjustments. The levy would expand upon or add new bilingual play and learn programs at six locations citywide and would allow libraries to stop charging overdue fines. I really do support the elimination of fines. Experts say fines are not a stable source of revenue. And when they get so high, they block off a patron's access, they can have a negative impact on low-income residents who may need services from the library the most. When we use late fees to raise funds to pay for library operations, we disproportionately impact those who can least afford to pay those fines. The move to get rid of fines on overdue items, though successful in other cities, has raised some concern on the council. Wiping them all out to even if even for people that are willing and of higher income or higher affluence, to me, I question whether that was the right method. But that's not what Chris Lehman is worried about. 
I'm not sure I'm going to vote for this levy. Lehman, who led the failed opposition campaign against the 2012 library levy, which passed with 64% of the vote, plans to write the no statement you'll see on this summer's ballot. Normally levies are for capital spending or for uh, emergencies. Lehman says he's not arguing against the need for more library funding. He's concerned the city is using a public vote to maintain such important services. The more central the library has become, the more that the city should fund it from general funds. In fact, where the levy supported 25 percent of the library's operating costs seven years ago, the new proposal is closer to 30 percent. Plus, the public is just dying of property tax increases. Lehman points out the library levy's 78 percent cost hike joins another nearly doubled levy for King County Parks on the August ballot and seems to continue a trend of calling for twice as much or more on local levy campaigns. The, one, the ones that seem to be put on the ballot now are things like parks and libraries and, and uh, fixing the roads and uh, those are fundamental things that traditionally were funded from the general fund. Lehman is also concerned the levy does not have a traditional citizen oversight board, leading to his mistrust of a levy writing process he says was rushed through by the mayor and city council. The best way to gain the public's trust is to show them very transparently what is happening. And a, a lot of what, what is happening recently has been quite secret. There's no secret that the new library levy opens a new chapter of questions for patrons on how Seattle pays for its services. I don't have a problem with paying taxes, you know, for just using the library resources. Everybody's rethinking what Seattle's done with its budget. Now it's up to voters this August to write the ending. The work we're doing now is, I feel it's really important for us to carry forward with it. My family are great supporters of the library, but we're really concerned about the affordability of Seattle. Joining us to discuss this further, we have with us Marcellus Turner. He is our chief librarian, speaking as a private citizen on this matter today. Marcellus, good to have you. Thank you so much. Also with us, Paul Guppy from the Washington Policy Center, which has not issued an official position on this levy, but he's here to raise some concerns. Paul, good to see you too. Thanks. And for here we go. Having me here. You bet. Uh, Marcellus, I want to start with you. Give us an overview of why this levy is needed, what this levy would be paying for. So this levy is a renewal of the 2012 levy that was passed a couple of years ago to support uh, the library system in four basic areas. They were collections, hours, maintenance, and technology. Mm -hmm. This levy in and of itself will renew that um, levy that occurred in 2012 mm -hmm. and will give us the opportunity to continue delivering great library services. Got it. And I know there's a lot more to it. And we're going to break yes. down some of those details. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the overview there. Uh, Paul, I know we've talked to you before about the library levy. Actually, both of you were here <laughs> about seven years ago with Councilmember we Godden at the time. Uh, good to have you back. I, I wanted to give us, uh, wanted you to give us, if you could, your overview of what concerns you the most about this ballot measure, please. Yeah, what concerns me is that the city council gives libraries such a low priority and underfunds them in the regular budget. The city has over $5 billion total in its budget, and yet the public is constantly told that libraries need more support, need more services, and that's essential. In fact, you know, a library card is a ticket to unlimited knowledge and imagination. It, and I grew up in Seattle, my kids live in Seattle, mm -hmm. and the library is a fabulous resource that we don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. And I want my kids to have the same great memories of walking into the library and choosing a book or being part of a program that I had when I was a kid and I think that should be preserved for the future. Yeah. So it concerns me when the city council goes through this long budget process and spends billions of dollars and then shorts the library system mm -hmm and forces it onto this kind of emergency levy, which we're doing now. Yeah. Marcellus, let's break this down. How much of a concern is it that this levy is growing under this proposal here? It would be, it's a quarter of your budget now in terms of the levy funding you get. It would be a third of your budget if this measure passes. Is it the right move, as Paul is asking here, to lean so much on voters to keep such an important asset afloat? Sure. I'd answer that question a bit differently and say that it is our only move at the moment. Uh, this is how it is being presented to us. And in order for us to continue the services that we currently have and to the opportunity to grow and address some of the additional needs, this is the option that we have available to us. Yeah. Is it a concern for librarians out there? <laughs> I mean, I've talked to a few of them. I, it's it's not uh, not a done deal. We've got, we've got no. a vote coming up on that. No, it is a... Uh, it is a concern because like many um, 
There are staff who feel that sometimes our, our taxes are a bit high mm -hmm. across the city, but we also know that we're able to do so much more and continue the services that we have that I believe that trumps that case. Okay. And I know also it's important to point out you worked with the council, you worked with the mayor, mm -hmm. talked with the public about mm -hmm. that too. Would you mind describing that process? Sure, we do. We um, To start it off, we actually do community conversations and surveys across the city a couple of times per year. And in those meetings and opportunities with the surveys, we ask our public, what do they want to see? Mm -hmm. And the buckets that we have, the components of the levy that are currently supported, are the types of things that they want to see. Additional hours, they want to see more collections, they want yeah. to see the maintenance of the facilities. Yeah. We then take that information and shared it with uh, the mayor's office for the mayor to take consideration into what they might give. Now, I did leave out the step that our board of trustees is involved in mm -hmm. the process. Sure, sure. And that is what goes to the mayor's office to think about. And then uh, the board of trustees actually endorses it. And then we work with the council to um, support their interest and understand their questions that they're asking to continue the movement of the legislation and the levy put forward. Okay, and thank you for breaking that sure. piece down. Paul, I want to make sure that I, I break this piece down with you though. The new levy is a continuation, as we've heard of the 2012 mm -hmm. levy, which the city said was a response to the 2008 recession. So I'm doing some quick math here. <laughs> Continuing that funding, okay, <clears throat> with an adjustment for inflation is about 160, $167 million. The new dollars that the city's asking for here works out to about roughly 52 million over the next seven years, another three bucks a month for that median homeowner. Does that make it any more palatable to you in hearing that? <laughs> well, Just asking. It's not the, it, it's, it's not the spending itself. Uh, it's the way that it's done. So exactly the process that was described, we're listening to the to the public, library services are important, there's no doubt about that, taking that request to the mayor and then finding that the mayor and the city council essentially turn that down when it comes to the regular budget. Mm -hmm. They say, we are not going to fund those things. You go out to the public and yeah. get a special levy in order to fund a basic service. Yeah. And so to keep it on a kind of crisis edge every mm -hmm. couple of years, you got to come back, convince the public to vote for it again. Of course, people want to support libraries. I do too. And so it puts the public in a box where you got to vote for this or else city leaders may shut your local library or cut back on services or reduce hours. Yeah. Um, it even says uh, quite proudly on the library website, we kept our libraries open. Yeah. And I ask myself, <laughs> well, we don't, proudly say we kept the firehouse open, we kept the police station open, our Harborview Hospital. These are vital essential services and I would include parks and libraries and community centers with that yeah. that should be funded through the money that the city has. Yeah. And by the way, just one or two percent of the current budget would provide all the funding that we're talking about right here. Yeah, yeah, and uh, this, is, this is a budget uh, situation I know the council's talked about for many years, and I just want to take it to that next level with you, Marcellus, because I know in talking with the public, even in talking with some of your librarians, it sounds like, rising property taxes are a very serious concern in Seattle and King County. We're talking about a 40-plus percent property tax increase, at the very least, between 2014 and 2018 for that median homeowner in King County. I know a lot of people love our libraries, but what do you tell them when they say enough is enough when it comes to taxes? This is a tough part of the conversation. Sure, it is always a tough part of the conversation, and I also appreciate Paul's recognizing us as a core or vital service to the city because we do believe that we are in that place as well. When the public speaks with us about that, what we try to do is express how our services have changed to meet the, meet the needs of our community, and our communities are asking for more. In addition to what they want from traditional library services, we're stepping into spaces that we have to address we have some issues that uh, we need to make safe. Three of our libraries need retrofitting for earthquakes. So we are just really trying to address a lot of needs that we have to do right now. Um, and that's how we are approaching it. And I know there's some different needs too when it comes to, I mean, a lot of different personnel kind of mm -hmm. coming in there. And by that, I mean people who might be homeless, people sure. who might have some different issues. Mm -hmm. I think the role of the library, it feels like it's changing. Can you help me with that sure. piece? I would, I would say that the role of the library is adapting, uh, and which is change in and of itself. But yeah. we are adapting. We are seeing so many different users. This city is um, experiencing daily growth in number of people who live here. And they come with additional needs or interest from their libraries mm -hmm. or expectations. And so we're trying to address that, but we also are stepping into some of the areas where we have normally focused on equality and we're looking at equity now and how we can deliver our services to the communities that matter most. Yeah, yeah and try to get to as many different communities as you mm -hmm. can with that. Uh, we're going to keep talking about that. Thank okay. you for bringing those pieces up. But, uh, Paul, I want to go back one last time on this tax piece here mm. because I know the argument we've heard from local leaders since 2001 when voters passed Tim Iman's I-747 was, mm. hey, this measure limits governments to these property tax increases of 1% each year. Anything above 
of that, put it to voters. So here we are. Seattle says it needs more funding for its libraries, and 64% of us said yes last time around in 2012. So what's the problem with asking again in 2019? Well, so property taxes are high, everybody knows that, and that starts with what's called the regular property tax, not counting special levies or services that the city is putting out to voters, but just the basic property tax, sales tax, business taxes, they add more and more to that all the time. And uh, Seattle is experiencing an enormous boom, and literally hundreds of millions of dollars are flowing into the city through the normal taxes that we all pay and which we should pay yeah. for the services that we receive. That's a good thing. But what concerns me is the, is the lack of attention and uh, mismanagement in not focusing on basic services, sort of, I don't know whether it's deliberately or not, or a political mm. process, and I know that there are special interests inside the city, I get all that. But for whatever reason, essential services that the public expects end up getting shorted, mm. and then uh, you know it's put on a special levy. So mm. without changing any tax rates right now, yeah. the city only needs to develop uh, devote one or two percent of the current budget to libraries and that would fund them. Yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna shift gears if I could a little bit here because Marcellus, I do wanna make sure I let people know these different services that would be made available if indeed the levy passes. You've touched on a few of these, but we're talking about maintaining retrofitting facilities, more services for homeless patrons, bilingual play and learn for kids. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an idea of some of the biggest added services that people could see if this measure passes? Sure, so one of the services that you will see most openly is the hours change in many of our libraries. Yeah. We're adding uh, Friday hours to four of our locations we're adding morning and evening hours to three of them. That mere addition right there will move 22 of our libraries to seven-day service as opposed to what we have now. So that's an added benefit. When people say they want more hours, that will do that. Yeah. We're also looking at opportunities to add evening hours across the city so that access to our computers technology in the evenings goes a bit longer for that kid needing homework help mm -hmm. and or for that community group who wants a meeting space yeah. to operate in. So right. it does that. Another one of the areas that we are adding to is, and that the public would see walking in the door, is we need a new ILS, which is the operating system for the library. Mm -hmm. When you come in and look for a book, you're using a catalog that it was built in 2005. Mm. So since that time, a lot has changed and we need to update that so that the public can use it in the way that we intended. So that's two things you would see right off the bat coming yeah. in the door. I don't think I'm gonna fix that one with my cell phone. Right <laughs> so that, that does sound like some work. And, and thanks yes. for pointing that. And Paul, I'll bring you here because I think the point I'm hearing from Marcellus on this and from a lot of Levy supporters too is that the need for services is expanding so quickly the city has to respond and do it in an equitable manner. Sure. Having more hours at just a few branches, mm -hmm. not good enough. Gotta do it to all 20 seven libraries is what the city council is saying here. What's your reaction to the fact that there is this growing need for services and the city is trying to respond equitably as best it can? Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So responding to the public is important. Yeah. And you know, that kid that wants to go to the library in the evening and work on homework is my kid. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's what we see around our community and we think that should be equally available to everyone. It's also a, a good character development, you might say, to take a child to the library and kind of point in a certain direction or point to the librarian and staff and say, ask that person, get help with your school project. Mm -hmm. This is a great independent exercise for any young person and you know that it's an, an environment that's being provided by the city, so that's important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but speaking of equity, the problem becomes with uh, rising taxes, with new taxes layered on top of park taxes and everything else, mm -hmm. uh, ends up hitting uh, low-income people the hardest and renters. Mm -hmm. So this makes uh, housing ever more unaffordable. Uh, the, this levy and other property taxes are regressive flat taxes that hit low-income people the hardest. So the very families that we're trying to help gain access to the library are the ones who see their financial burden go up. They see their uh, weekly income being cut yeah. because the city is, again, moving core services onto a special levy instead yeah. of funding them with development dollars or yeah. the increase in economic expansion or the taxes that high tech companies pay. Right. All, all of this is being put into the city treasury but is not being devoted to the services that we need. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Marcellus, I wanted to switch gears one more time because I want to make sure I cover this one piece here. About $8 million for the levy would go towards a relatively novel concept, eliminating overdue fines. It would appear that, and this is just first blush for me, <laughs> you do away with fines, you lose revenue for one, 
and you'd remove a real sense of responsibility for people. You need to bring this thing back. Mm -hmm. Can you help help us with the rationale behind sure, this? Sure, a couple of things. There are a couple of uh, things to address in that. The first one is that um, this revenue that it would be replacing is actually a dwindling source of revenue. Fines and fees have been dwindling ever since uh, the last couple of years as electronic resources have come into yeah. play. And that is not a base upon which to sustain operations. We use those fines and fees revenue to sustain operations so it would mean staffing, it would mean hours, it would mean collections and materials. Okay. Mm -hmm. We were doing that on a declining revenue base and what the city is doing is replacing the revenue. That in and of itself doesn't eliminate the responsibility that we will have. There are two things. First of all, we're in the business of loaning materials, so mm -hmm. it's in our best interest to get those materials back. Yeah. So the incentive is that you will still receive notices, you will still re have the opportunity to return the item. The only thing we're saying is that the fines that will be a, that we will no longer collect, and that's important to note too. We yes. won't, it is not that we are asking the public to waive fines. We're saying that we will no longer assess fines, mm. and if there is no assessment of fines, there is no revenue to collect or none to waive. Okay. So we will be doing that. But in and of itself, what has been discovered is that that belief that libraries lived on for so many years that um, incurring fines would in, in turn make a cause a person to return an item is just not as true as it used to be. Mm. It's also proven that it has a disproportionate impact on our communities of color right. and lower income areas. So those are the types of things that the barriers that we want to eliminate. Right, because when, when those when those fines accrue to eight dollars or so, it, it goes over it to stops. collections, and that's tough. Correct. Yeah. And the last thing I'll add about that, Please. which is just a little technicality that many may not recognize that we distinguish between fines and fees. Fines is what is attached to a patron's record when they are late returning the item. The fee is when that item is lost. The fees will still be in place. Yep. Mm -hmm. No sure. matter what we do, if someone refuses or re fails to return an item, they will be assessed a fee, and that fee is the cost of replacing that item, yep. and that in and of itself will cease their access and use of the library. Got it. Replacement fees, make sure you bring it back. 40 days. At the, at that the, is at what the, we want. All right. That is how it is currently structured. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you yeah. for bringing that up. Paul, your response to this. I just thought this was a very interesting piece of this. I know <laughs> dozens of library systems have this no overdue yeah. fine system around the country. Sure. There are even some Snohomish Island, Kitsap counties. What do you think about this? Well, first of all, some of these overdue books are at my house. Mm. So, okay, you know, all right, for, full disclosure. Uh, yeah. But I think Marcellus is exactly right, that okay. there's just a point where it's not worth continuing the system anymore. Maybe it mm. costs more than you collect. Yeah. Um, there's also a question about access. I like the idea of free and easy access to the materials sure. that the library provides. Um, and also, again, I would go back to the city council and the mayor, $8 million is pocket change for them. Okay, they could come up with that kind of money in a blink, mm -hmm. uh, and yet they won't do it. So in a way, it's like they're, they're sort of just making the library system mm -hmm. go out there and find funding for itself. But every point you made about the actual collection I think is right, and I think okay. it enhances people's access and experience with the library okay. to not have to worry about the fines. Okay, sure. all right. Fiscal responsibility yes. telling us, don't worry about the fines. <laughs> uh, things are, things are happening today. The all, yes, right, all right, all right, thank you. Good, good message there. Marcellus, back to you. Some concerns have been raised about the oversight of this levy. Library levy, now seven years old, has been overseen by the library's board of trustees and you. Mm -hmm. I know some critics have said a more traditional public oversight board would be more appropriate. I'm looking at the growing size of this levy, potentially the fact it would take up a bigger percentage of your budget. Do you think a different oversight system is needed? I do not, uh, for several reasons. First of all, by library law, state law, uh, the Board of Trustees of the library system are responsible for the financial responsibility of the library operations and governance. So we have five fully capable and qualified people to do that. That is their job. They don't have many in that sense, but that is one of their primary areas of focus. And so they have stepped up to the plate in these last seven years doing that very thing that they will be entrusted with doing for the next seven years. Okay. Fully qualified ask the right questions, mm -hmm. help us uh, share the work that we're doing, poke the bear when they need to, okay. and that's pretty good for us. Is there enough public involvement, I think, is that root question? I think there is enough public involvement, but we're always open, or the Board of Trustees is always open to more involvement. We give the community at least two or three times per year to come and talk with us about what we're doing, whether we're um, moving in the right direction or what they want to see, mm -hmm. and then we report, uh, publish a report each year on what we've been doing, so we give them every opportunity to weigh in, but 
but we're always open to hearing something more. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you for that. Paul, any thoughts about the oversight of, of this levy? Does it need some more scrutiny? What do you think? Well, you're going to be shocked with my, <laughs> my comment about government because yeah. I could give many examples at okay. state and local level. Mm. Uh, but it's clear that the libraries are, are functioning well when they are funded and that it's really the support that they get from the city that's important. Yeah. So it's not so much the technical oversight, which okay. I think is working well. And in fact, the message we hear from the public is that they would like more services. Yep. They would like the libraries to do more. I see. So I don't think that adding a citizen's oversight committee would make it any better than what's being done right now. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to try to head down two pathways here, if I could, with you here. Marcellus, you first. If this levy passes, what happens? If it doesn't pass, what happens? Help me out. So if the levy passes, a couple of things. First of all, you'll have a he very happy person sitting okay. in front of you. All right, all right. Uh, You're generally a... <laughs> pretty happy, but you'd be a lot happier. I'm generally okay. pretty happy. Yeah. Uh, but you will have that because what it means is that we can serve our public in the ways that they have asked us for. We do a survey each year, uh, every couple of years, and we just did one. And the items that we are trying to put forward in this renewal are the very things that they asked for. We would love to be able to deliver on that, so that would make us very happy. It also allow us to address some of the challenges or issues that we face. We have no uh, opportunity to address the seismic retrofits. They're just things that we cannot do, yeah. but we want to provide safe spaces for them. So that's the type of thing that will happen if we pass. Carrying programs and services, enhancing our bilingual story times, all of those things yeah. matter. If the levy were to fail, uh, you'd have a very disappointed city librarian, okay. but a, a citizen sitting in front of you. But what you'd also have is that the library system would have to resize to fit the budget that we are presented with. Resizing means a lot of things. It means that we will have to look at the whole program of service and figure out the best options for delivering library services at a reduced rate. Yeah. It could mean anything from reduced hours, reduced collections. I don't know how many of our listeners remember pre-2012. But pre-2012, we had furloughs for our staff. Mm -hmm. We were also not open as many hours per week. We were closed several days of the week. Uh, we did not have large collections. Maintenance was deferred on our building. So yeah. all of that comes into play okay. uh, to do that. Okay. Uh, Paul, your take on the past, not past scenario. Yeah, there's a third option, which I'll describe. So uh, if it passes, obviously it just feeds into the current culture of the city, which is continue to shift vital public services onto special levies, spend uh, the budget on something else, and it would just reward the city council and the mayor for continuing the, cer the current pattern. I just think we'll see more of that. If it were to fail, um, I don't think the city is going to shut down the libraries. I think there would be is a culture shock to the establishment of our city who would actually have to wake up one day and say, we need to fund this service. Mm -hmm. And that would be astonishing. Mm -hmm. uh, levies supposedly never fail in Seattle, mm -hmm. which is why we constantly get more of them. So it would be an interesting thought experiment. I don't need to pick on <laughs> levies or yeah. libraries. It could be something yeah. else. But if just one of these basic service levies failed in this upcoming August, um, we're going to have a new city council in January. Yeah. And it would really be a interesting change culturally for our city in the politics and, and the way the establishment works mm -hmm. to actually go back to the drawing board and say, let's fund libraries as part of an essential service of the city. In fact, increase their funding yeah. as part of the regular growth in the budget. Thank you very much for that 15 second version if you can. Mm. Last words for voters out there, Marcellus? Sure. Uh, an investment in voting for this levy would ensure that we're delivering the services that they're asking for, we're open when they need us, and that it serves all of our community. That's the best thing that we can do. All right, last words, Paul. Just to throw out the crazy idea of uh, <laughs> thinking about sending a signal to the city of uh, if the levy fails, to get our public leaders to give it a more serious look and think about how to fund levies without having to layer on yet more cost onto housing. Okay, thank you very much, both of you, for your input. We will be right back. I'm pro-levy because I'm pro-library. A lot of people can't afford to pay. The sense of urgency around improving the library system, I don't really feel it. Libraries are a great public resource. Um, they need to be funded better. We'd like to know what you think. Send us an email at contact at seattlechannel.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter and give us your feedback. Before we close today, it's time for our weekly CIO poll. Do you support renewing the library levy? Yes, no, or are you undecided? We want to know what you think. Cast your vote and weigh in with your comments at our website, seattlechannel.org slash cityinsideout. While you're there, you can watch our programs online anytime. Coming up next week, a renaissance in our midst. There are big plans to revitalize a small neighborhood on the edge of Pioneer Square. 
how do city and community leaders envision taking back public spaces while honoring the city's Native American roots? Find out next time on City Inside Out. I hope you join us.